Hey guys, for Crash Gaming here, welcome back to another video. Now, I know it has been a long time since I've sort of uh, revisited this uh, ranking video. There's just been a lot of stuff going on. I've been, um, I've been moving house, so we've been out without Wi-Fi for a little while. Uh, and I've been just sort of concentrating on my rating. We finally got down Fate Scribe Ricardo. I'm really happy about that. Uh, I should have the uh, commentary for that uh, sooner or later. So we're continuing on. Uh, with this dungeon ranking videos, I am working on other ranking videos that will come after this. So I think we've got this video and then two more after that. So I'm really excited to do the uh, the last video, which will be the the, uh, the top 20, I suppose. So the last one we did was Shattered Halls, I believe. So this one we're starting off with um, Ockendoon and Warlords of Draenor. This dungeon had a lot going for it, I suppose. I really like the, uh, the idea of, like, you know, there's... Uh, a lot of friendly Okanai mobs and suddenly half of them betrayed uh, sort of like the shield versus hydra thing um, in Marvel's if, you, if you've ever seen that. That was really uh, quite cool to see um, after you uh, kill the first boss. But overall I don't think the bosses were that good. I think the first boss was really good. Um, otherwise the other two bosses were just kind of meh. They were just kind of really uh, tedious in their own way shape or form um, but it is really cool it's very uh it's a very pretty dungeon like it's much better than um than what we have in outland i suppose next one is drag Farren keep not the greatest dungeon because uh well the only reason that this dungeon is so far down on the list is because not a single group back in wrath of the lich king that i had could ever get past this part where I'm playing right now. It's the uh it's the room full of scourge and uh the trash keeps uh spawning and whatnot. So we just kept wiping the groups groups kept expanding, we just could not do it. I didn't even uh complete that dungeon back when it was current. It was so so annoying. Um the dungeon overall is okay. The nervous boss is kinda of meh though, but whatever. Die them all. So the first two wings are kind of really bad. The one where you're fighting all sorts of satyrs and having to to talk down the tree, talk to the tree to knock down the door was a neat idea. Uh, same with the last boss, Alzin, the wild shape of blowing the wall and spunching a bunch of imps was quite cool, but it got boring quite quickly. What's worse though is that the next wing, when you've got a giant demon, which is really cool, that's locked up in the center prison. And I remember no one knowing how to unlock it uh, back then, which really sucked because uh, I would have loved to have uh, killed that boss. I think his name was Emil Far uh, back then. But the uh, last one was really, really cool with the um, the tribute chest. with um, And to maximize the benefits, you really had to do some clever uh, maneuvering around that dungeon, so which was really cool. So die more. Mm. Overall, no, not really uh, my type of dungeon. Again, the, uh, the third part of it was really cool, but the first two parts were kind of meh. Moving on to BFA, the Waycrest Manor. The Waycrest Manor was a really cool dungeon, especially if you've just um, completed the uh, the Drustfar storyline, which was incredible. That was probably one of the best zones um, in BFA to level in, just because of the story. I mean, it makes sense that the... The, the Waycrest lady is trying to uh, bring honor back to her family because uh, of the Waycrest uh, parents being all sort of witchy and stuff. It got really tedious and annoying when you add things like bursting, quaking, and sanguine. Not all at once, obviously, but I just hated coming in here with those uh, affixes active, as well as awakened. And it's not much, not so much managing the mobs if you don't know uh, how it works, but. Um, Dragging the bosses down through several floors, especially when snapping was a thing, was just awkward and, like, not fun <laughs> at all. The only really good boss in there was uh, Gorak Tor, because that fight was, is all about uh, control, and that fight can easily uh, fall apart if you, you like, miss a uh, blowing up an ad and such. Uh, so Gorak Tor was really cool. Wakeless Manor, overall, just, no. Uh, okay, same thing that Preach said about this dungeon. I actually do like this dungeon, but it is down on my list. It is the Oculus. I know a lot of people hate this dungeon, but I didn't mind it. I love 
uh, when vehicle combat is being used in dungeons. Obviously, it doesn't been used much. I think the last time they did it was Iron Docks, I believe. Um, but the reason why this one is so far down is because people hated this dungeon. The setting is really, really cool. You're overlook. You're on a flying dragon. You're looking over the whole Koldara uh, zone, which is an amazing place. However, I was not a fan of like keep having to dismount. Uh, the dragon killing the trash and having to mount again multiple multiple times. I thought that was just really bad uh, But I suppose uh, people prefer it that way So but oculus is still good. It's just down because of those reasons Zolaman. Zolaman is really really fun uh, Again with the timed dungeon just like or the time challenge I should say uh, Like some of the other dungeons, which was really hard back then. I remember um we were struggling at, I think his name was Maloriac. Uh, no, Nowalak. Nowalak. Yeah, not Maloriac, obviously. Uh, Nowalak was really hard to um, catch up on, especially uh, if you do manage to kill Nowalak in a decent time. You still had, um, what was it, the, the Panther area. The Panther area really slowed you down with all the uh, Panthers coming out of the um, out of the bushes and attacking you. Uh, and there's also there's the other thing where you just uh, go around or you find these like hex Amani sticks or something and you can go down to uh, the middle area and use those on all the uh, the frogs. I thought that was a really really cool idea and each one of them you did uh, gave you sort of like a, a different benefits. I mean, there was like a few sort of hidden mystery vendors I suppose. Um, and I'd say all the bosses are really cool, apart from maybe, say, the first one. The first one was, um, kind of lackluster, I suppose. Um, but this was, uh, far more enjoyable than, or far more less enjoyable than, I'd say, than, uh, Zorkura. That's not next to my list, but, uh, I'm just saying that. Um, Plaguefall. Plaguefall, I just don't really have much to say about Plagueful. I mean, it looks okay. I like the idea of the um, uh, the ruined necropolis. It's like each of the five houses of Maldraxxus have their own necropolis, and you sort of find the last boss in those ruins, uh, which is really cool. I really, really do love the last boss, <laughs> especially in the last 30%. I just, it feels like it is tricky to play around, like, you know, with all the tentacles and all the skeletons spawning out there. It is really cool, but... Uh, I can see why people hate it and why people think it's really hard. I don't think people seem to realize that they can use the bombs after the first boss, which really annoys me because it's such a huge um, time save, pulling lots of trash and then blowing them up with the, uh, or the barrels, as far as the uh, plague barrels. No one ever did that, so that really sucked. Shadow Labyrinth. Although this is like a, a very long dungeon, I don't mind it that much. Like, I mean, the part where I'm playing right now is you have to kill all the Kabbalists to uh, activate the first boss. I thought that was kind of annoying. Uh, but after that, it really picks itself up. And you're with the big, um, I don't know what you call it, like the big room and you've got the big ogre <laughs> standing right at the door. Um, and he looks like he will just rip you apart, which he does. He was he was a, uh, quite a difficult boss back then. Um so yeah, and and some of them also quite tricky as well. Some of the demons, uh, I think there might have been some mobs that uh, mind control you or something. Sure. Something it is still kind of annoyed, but it was uh, still very good. And then you got the uh, the last boss area, which is a big fucking uh, echo elemental or something. <laughs> it's really cool, and like the uh, the shadow council is trying to um, uh, bring him down, and then you like uh, go kill them from behind, and you end up killing. Uh, Murmur, if you don't know who Murmur is, he's just like this big echo of sound elementals sort of thing. He He's the one that's responsible for destroying uh, uh, Okundun and Outland, so that was a really good idea. Arkway. The random pathing of Arkway was was really, really cool, as well as the like the variety of mobs, especially in the uh, the Corstalax area, the, the big like dog robot fucking shit, I don't know. Uh, but it did get quite frustrating with the Mythic Plus affixes added into it. Mainly Sanguine, because there's like a lot of mobs that just stand there and just cast, which no one likes, uh, especially especially in the Corsax area, and especially in the Spider Boss area. You've got 
loads of spiders uh, spawning after you um, after you kill loads of them, uh, and then they just heal a bunch from Sanguine. And yeah, same thing with the Corsax area. I think there's some uh, casters that just never want to move out of Sanguine. The last boss is really really cool. Like you you kill him uh, or get him to fifty percent, and then he does this whole maze sort of thing where you got to get back to him before he kills you. I thought that was a really really um, good idea for like a last boss uh, to do and it, w it wasn't hard um, but it was good I mean you know good ideas for uh, dungeon bosses don't have to be hard it just need to be uh, engaging and interesting well for me at least uh, the next one I've got is Zorfarak Zorfarak had again it had a lot going for it it's just I'm not, <laughs> I'm just going to say this right now, I'm not a big fan of like dungeons that are in the desert at which Zulfrak was. I mean, I get it's uh, like the capital of uh, the Fakari trolls or the uh, Blood Scalp trolls or something. Um, so the idea was there, but it, in theory it just didn't really um, pay off. However, I do like the, and I think a lot of people uh, remember Zolfrak about this is the um, the one where you go up to the top of the temple and you uh, you free the NPCs and then you look down the stairs and you've got this huge massive cluster of mobs waiting to be killed and whether or not you'd um, let them come to you or you go down to them it was, it was really cool uh, I'm not gonna lie that was a really cool um, experience and then one of them going up and blowing up the door um to the last boss uh was really really cool as well so it's off rack yeah it does have its up and it does have its downs but that's the case for every single dungeon steam vault steam vault's kind of weird it's like one of those dungeons where i feel like um not many people did not like in the burning crusade but say in uh wrath of the lich king when i was doing all these dungeons um leveling up it is quite it was quite cool to see um another mech in here or mech Jinea? I don't know how you say that word. Uh, like in this suit, like um, McGenea Thermoplug from um, No Mercado, that was really cool to see. Because um, that early on was, I thought, was one of the coolest mobs in the game. Just like a gnome in a huge fucking mega suit. Uh, but overall, I don't really have anything bad to say about the Steam, salt, Steam Vault. Um, I just feel like it was missing something. It was missing something um, crucial that could have made this dungeon a lot better. Uka Pinnacle. Uka Pinnacle was a very average dungeon, but it got to a point, and especially in Wrath of the Lich King, that most of these bo these bosses could be skipped. Like you could you could walk past um, the Valkyr boss, and then you could just completely walk past the um, the statue boss as well. But then you get to uh, you come out of the corner, and you see this big fucking Yimia with his um, with his like what is a is a proto Drake, yeah. And that boss is really good, I gotta say, um, with the deep breath and um, uh, you just like breeze down one side of the room. That was really, really cool to see. And I always loved um, doing that boss. The same cannot be said for that last boss, like being stunned for half that fight just isn't fun. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I mean in uh time walking nowadays people do kill all the bosses like the one thing i do like about um the valkyrie boss is that you can like walk past it and kill uh trash uh just to excuse me just to save yourself a bit of time so i did like that people did um do that maybe half the time otherwise they just uh wait for the boss uh but that is a that is a good option like if you've got a boss that has that has a lot of rp in it you can at least open the door and just uh, continue and killing trash and then you come back and then uh, the boss will be ready. And I do like the um, the whole idea of shooting down the dragon on uh, Skadi and using the harpoons and all that stuff. Uh, I'm going to do a shout out in dungeon now. Halls of Atonement. Halls of Atonement is an okay dungeon. I, th I think now we're getting into the, the good dungeons, I'd say. Halls of Atomer is an okay dungeon. The story behind it is good. However, I feel like it was very uh, off-putting and it felt sort of weird that you were killing lots of trash um, in, say, the first half of the dungeon and then you were just killing all the bosses 
um, in the second half of the dungeon. I thought that was really weird. I don't think that's how dungeons really should be. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of trash you can skip, but it's really easy to pull um, on accident, like especially when you're going up to the stairs to the uh, the second boss. Uh, it was just, yeah. It, it's, it's still a good dungeon, I'll give you that. Slightly above that, Halls of Lightning. Halls of Lightning was a very difficult dungeon back in Wrath of the Lich King. And it was very good as well. I like the boss where he um, where you switch between the stances. He's like a warrior, right? He's got his berserker stance. He's got his um, defensive stance, like General Nazgrim, actually. Maybe because that back at the time I was uh, playing a warrior. Maybe that was it. The second and third boss, and most of the treasure between it was quite bad. I'm not gonna lie. Even that, even that giant. Um, Behemoth, the, the blacksmith little guy. Then you come to Loken. Loken is amazing. Like he's one of those bosses where he really um, teaches you like raid awareness uh, and like the 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 feel that you need to like maybe read uh, or like research up on what these mechanics do because they're very uh, they're very deadly if you don't know. Um, if you don't know Logan's mechanics, so I just found that uh, a really good dungeon. Shadowhand Monastery. I think this was the best, probably the best dungeon they had in Mr. Pandaria. Most of the Mr. Pandaria dungeons were really, really bad, uh, but this one was okay. It did have another sh one of those Shah mobs, the the Shah of Violence, which I said in the um, Temple of the Jade Serpents. Uh, I was always a big fan of those massive Shah manifestations. There were they were really, really cool. And again, it's a nice uh, variety of mobs. You've got some Shah mobs, you've got some Pandaren ghost mobs, and then you've got, um, yeah, just some normal um, Pandaren mobs that I, I suppose it doesn't really have a good uh, variety. But the main thing that did really drag it down was the first boss. I don't think anybody ever liked that first box. Uh, I just hate it when you just have to wait for mechanics where you, you feel like you can't really do anything to sort of uh, speed it up. So I think that was a big loss for Shadow Pan Monastery. However, I did think it was it was still an okay dungeon. Well of Eternity. Well of Eternity is a really good dungeon. The roleplay after the second boss was a bit much. Just waiting for like Illidan and Tyrande to sort of get on with their shit. But I get like the story the story behind this is really, really good. I mean, this is uh, back before Azeroth was um, split into its continents. And before, well, actually many other important um, events of the Warcraft War happened. Um, and then fighting um, Manoroth uh, for the first time was really, really cool. I did, I actually did like Manoroth. Uh, even though most people did it. But Queen Azhara was just... No. <laughs> no. You're not even fighting Queen Ajara herself directly. You're just fighting her, her ads. And then the... the oh, I suppose the mind control mechanic was kind of interesting. But overall... Uh, overall, is a good dungeon. Doing the maze for the first time was awesome. However, that uh, did lose its taste once you did it for the 10th, 20th, 30th, 40th time. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, good dungeon. And Cat the Old Kingdom. Again, just like um what dungeon did I say? Oh god, Pentacle. It has a lot of bosses that could be skipped. I think back in Wrath of Lich King, people only did two of the of the five bosses. I think one of them being the um the prince, the the blood prince, uh whatever his name is. I don't really like that boss that much. Um, and then obviously the last boss. The last boss is very interesting because back, I remember when I was like nine or ten years old, and when he, whenever he casts, what is the mechanic called? Uh, hysteria, or where he like um, spawns like uh, copies of yourself. That was really scary. I was like, why are my friends killing me? <laughs> and then uh, all of a sudden, it would just end. So uh, that was that was a good feeling. Um, However, it did sort of lose its taste. Uh, and again, it has a good variety of mobs. Like, you've got the spider or the Nerubians. Like, you've got the moss giants. Uh, even the Twilight's Hammer, which I'm always a big fan of the Twilight's Hammer. Temple of uh, Atal Hakar. Again, an average dungeon. It was quite quick, which was nice. And 
uh, the idea that you're fighting uh, green dragons was uh, very unique because, I mean, you know, it's sort of weird how you're just sort of fighting uh, green dragons, but I suppose they're uh, sort of the older ones that are uh, serving uh, Ranicus. I think he's the consort of Ysera, I believe. If I, I'm sorry if I got the law wrong, but um, I think that's the case. Um, yeah, it was a very short dungeon, and the place itself was quite small as well, so you could sort of, uh, well, there wasn't much running, let's say, uh, compared to, uh, some other dungeons. But yeah, I do like the idea that we're fighting, um, the green dragons, it's not something we normally do. Uh, just like the, say, if we were fighting red dragons or <laughs> bronze dragons or something, I don't know. But, um, that uniqueness did... Uh, have its uh, feeling back and then. Gundrak. Gundrak. Really cool dungeon. All of the bosses are actually really good. Especially the um, the, Chikari, the Drakari Colossus. I didn't mind waiting for uh, the boss to just phase and just spit out the Drakari Elemental. Uh, I always enjoyed that. Um, and I don't mind that the fact that you can just um, jump down and swim and skip most of the trash because if anyone ever did that the normal way where they go up the ramp this is the, after the second boss where they go up uh, around that ramp that would just take forever so I'm glad um, that that skip is available I do get how some people don't like that that's the case uh, but this is me this is my list so uh, and this was one of the dungeons where I didn't mind farming uh, for gear, because again, it is short and the it is a very um, enjoyable dungeon. The achievement on the last boss was very annoying and still is very annoying because you just have to wait like 20 minutes for uh, your party to get impaled. I don't think you need that for the meta achievement anymore, but you can still do it for like achievement points or something like that. Uh, what's the next one? Oh, yeah, Halls of Reflection. So mainly good because of the escape of Arthur's, just like uh, Preach said. Like, the main sort of build-up of this dungeon is uh, the Arthur's fight and how he's sort of summoning mobs and chasing you, <laughs> which was um, which was really good. It really, um, like, rose your hope. You just want to kill all the ads before uh, Arthur's uh, gets you and kills you. And we're not even going to talk about those first two bosses because, I, as I said, I hate these sort of wave base sort of things. It is substantially quicker than most wave base things, like in the um, in the the Black Morass dungeon, the opening of the, of the Dark Portal dungeon. It was uh, quicker of that, and I do like that. But it still has this massive break in between where you're not really doing anything, so that really sucks. Theatre of Pain. I, I thought this might have been um, lower down on my list, but Theatre of Pain, again, just like uh, the other side, where you got the Mythic Plus uh, 10 affix and you, you're you just going back and forth killing all the, um, all the lieutenants, which I thought was really stupid and is a big, <laughs> still is a big time waste. Maybe not so much um, compared to uh, the other side. The dungeon itself, I thought it's okay. I do like the fact that um, you're going into different wings that represents the different houses uh, and stuff. Then coming back up to face the last boss, which is really hard on Tyrannical. And I think this ra oh, this dungeon sorry, has uh, great potential to be a raid, or had uh, great potential to be a raid after they killed off uh, Margrave Virus. They just have, like, you know, a boss in the main area and then have uh, extra wings uh, opened up, but I don't know, that's just me. Halls of Valor, I think we're getting into the really good dungeons now. Halls of Valor is awesome. They got a lot of things right with the Halls of Valor. It's like, you got the big med hall, uh, just like in the warrior class order hall, but it's not the same place. Uh, so yeah, you have the big med hall, you got the big uh, hunting grounds where you're looking for the footprints of um, of uh, the dog boss and you're trying to see uh, where he is and then he runs off uh, licking his wounds it's just it's just really good it just feels like a horse of valor it feels like uh, what um, Odin's hunting ground would be like uh, Herger was a big disappointment though especially on the home of the class levels when it 
Uh, her abilities would just randomly one-shot you. Uh, just because of how much damage they did. And I would say that uh, Gokking Scovold was an okay boss. Like, utilizing the um, the Aegis of Agma was a cool idea. Uh, and Odin was really cool as well. Lost City of Tolvir, slightly better than the Halls of Valor for a couple different reasons. The bosses were all reasonably difficult, especially the um, the prophets, high prophet Baron, and they can they can easily kill you uh, if you're not paying attention, especially especially on the general Husan boss, like all the earthquakes and the discs going on, and the last boss was was meh. Uh, now you're probably wondering where this dungeon is on the list, but, and I know a lot of people hate it, but I don't mind it. It's the Assault on Violet Hold. Significantly better than the old Violet Hold. The new bosses are definitely more, much more fun, especially the, um, the Blood Queen. Or the, she's the, um, the daughter of Blood Queen Lanethel, for, uh, people that don't know. Um, the Mind Flayer is really good. The huge Frost Rim is really good. The Trash is still... Quite boring, but at least they were using the um the demons uh back then and then what's really cool is they stuck a little random uh NPC. He's part of the I think it's the inscription uh quest chain, which was which is a really nice touch. Uh as well. And then something uh we don't normally see, which is the Spider Queen bo uh Spider Queen mobs or the what are they called? The air Arasani? Arasani? Or something? Uh, that was really cool. And then you end up getting to fight the um, the guy who's been unlocking all of the uh, all of the prisons and uh, open up all of the portals, which was really, really cool. And then the uh, the final boss, oops, the final boss uh, spawning. And it could be e either one or two. I think both the bosses are okay. I'd say that the, um, the Fell Lord is better than the Arasani. Um, but I don't mind. And the, all the, yeah, all of the bosses are really, really cool. Magus's Terrace. I'll do one more after this, and then we'll call it for this video. Um, yeah, everything you would expect for a Blood Elf stronghold on a very small island can be pretty much found in the Magus's Terrace. You've got a mix of, like, wretched elves, uh, in there, along with some mana worms, and then the big <laughs> fucking, uh, mana elemental, which was really, really cool. Um... And then you've got the, the PvP boss. Well, it's not really a PvP boss, but uh, it was still really cool. I, I find it a tad too annoying at times, um, just because of how some of their mechanics work. And then um, and then you've got Chaos House as well. I, just, I thought it was really weird. Uh, I don't know why they did that. Uh, and then we've got Orcanite Crips. I thought this would be lower on my list, but I remember this being... Uh, a very difficult dungeon, which I kind of grew on. Similar to the Shadow Moon Burial Grounds, this is exactly what you'd find um, in an Ocanai Crypt from Pile of Bones everywhere, Ghosts of Fallen, Draenei, Soul Monsters in the form of Shurek. Uh, the Dead Watcher was one of the worst bosses ever. Just period, worst bosses ever. Um, mainly because of that reason why it's not high on my list. So I think that's it for this video. We've got... So we've got two more videos uh, to do. We've got the next one uh, and then the last one, uh, which I've got uh, the last twenty. So I'm really excited to uh, see this video. I do got I do have more videos um, coming out over the course of the next two weeks. I'm just sort of busy um, with uh, the racing, the and whatnot. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.